Four weeks, four weeks, but the Democratic majority in the House of Representatives is finally ready, finally ready to defend their impeachment of the President of the United States. After weeks of delay, the Speaker of the House decided yesterday that a trial could finally go forward. She signed the impeachment papers. That took place, Madam President, at a table with a political slogan stuck onto it. And they posed, they posed afterwards for smiling photos. And the speaker distributed souvenir pens, souvenir pens to her own colleagues emblazoned with her golden signature that literally came in on silver platters. The pens literally came in on silver platters. Golden pens on silver platters. A souvenir to celebrate the moment. Now, I seem to remember Democrats falling over themselves to say they did not see impeachment as a long sought political win. House Democrats said over and over that they recognized the gravity and the seriousness of this action. And of course, they had only come to it reluctantly. Well, nothing says seriousness and sobriety like handing out souvenirs. As though this were a happy bill signing instead of the gravest process in our Constitution. This final display neatly distilled the House's entire partisan process into one perfect visual. It was transparently partisan performance from beginning to end. That's why they sped through a slapdash inquiry in 12 weeks when previous presidential impeachments <clears throat> came after months, if not years, <clears throat> of investigations and hearings. That's why the House cut short their own inquiry, declined to pursue their own subpoenas, and denied the president due process. But now, now, they want the Senate to redo their homework and rerun the investigation. That's why our colleague, the Democratic leader, told the press that whatever happens next, as long as he can weaponize the trial to hurt Republicans in the 2020 election, quote, <clears throat> It's a win-win, said the Democratic leader of the Senate. And that's why the Speaker of the House apparently saw nothing strange about celebrating the third presidential impeachment in American history with souvenirs and posed photographs. Souvenirs and posed photographs. Well, Madam President, that pretty well sums it up. That's what the process has been thus far. But it's not what this process will be going forward. Now, the Founding Fathers who crafted and ratified our Constitution knew <clears throat> that our nation might sometimes fall prey uh, to the kind of dangerous factionalism and partisanship that has consumed, literally consumed, the House of Representatives. The framers set up the Senate specifically to act as a check against the short-termism and the runaway passions to which the House of Representatives might fall victim. Alexander Hamilton worried, quote, the demon of faction would extend his scepter over the House majorities at certain seasons, said Alexander Hamilton. And he feared <clears throat> for the viability of the government established by the Constitution if blinded. <clears throat> <clears throat> he feared for the viability of the government established by the Constitution if blinded by factionalism, the House of Representatives would abuse the power of impeachment to serve nakedly partisan goals rather than the long term interests of the American people and their republic. 
But fortunately, they did something about it. They did not give both the power and the power to remove to the House. They divided the power and placed the final decision on removal over here in the Senate. <clears throat> this body, this chamber exists precisely, precisely, Madam President, so that we can look past the daily dramas and understand how our actions will reverberate for generations so that we can put aside animal reflexes and animosities and coolly consider how to best serve our country in the long run, so that we can break factional fevers before they jeopardize the core institutions of our government. <clears throat> As Hamilton put it, only the Senate with, quote, confidence enough in its own situation, end quote, can preserve unawed and uninfluenced the necessary impartiality between an individual accused and the representatives of the people, his accusers. So, Madam President, the House's hour is over. The Senate's time is at hand. It's time for this proud body to honor our founding purpose. Now, on an entirely different matter, <clears throat> before we turn to the trial in earnest, the Senate has one more major accomplishment to deliver to the American people. Yesterday, we began floor consideration of the most significant update to the North American trade policy in nearly 30 years. And in just a couple of hours, we're going to pass the USMCA and send it to President Trump for his signature. It was back in 2018 when the Trump administration finalized its talks with the governments of Mexico and Canada. This has been a major priority for the president and for many of us in both houses of Congress. <clears throat> That's because American livelihoods in every corner of every state depend on these critical trading relationships. Farmers, growers, cattlemen, manufacturers, small businesses, big businesses, this is a major step for our whole country. In the 26 years since the ratification of NAFTA, trade with Mexico and Canada has come to directly support 12 million American jobs, 12 million workers and their families who depend on robust trade with our North American neighbors. Our neighbors to the north 